So let's talk through the armies of Warhammer 40k in terms of popularity, which are the most played out there and which are the least, and before watching how widely played do you think your main faction is? Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today I thought I'd do a video on army popularity. In a recent poll I asked you guys which armies you played in collectors, people who watch the channel self-reporting which armies they collect, and who was interested to see the most and least popular factions. For this video I thought we'd go through them each in turn, starting with the most played and finishing with the least. I perhaps wanted to focus a little bit more on the armies that seem to get played less than others, and a few of the factors that might drive them to being less popular than others. First up, and to absolutely no one's surprise, Space Marines rank in first, collected by almost 40% of players out there. Just about anyone could have predicted that. They are pretty much the poster boys of the setting, setting out to fight against the galaxy with bolter and power armor. And they've got loads of theme and variety within the different chapters that you can collect. Quite a lot more support, background and depth than you get for many of the other factions, even major ones. There's a serious amount of lore and theming in Space Marine chapters out there. There's definitely a bit of a snowball effect going on with Games Workshop and model releases as well. Space Marines are the most collected, therefore they get more releases than any other faction, which makes it all the more likely that other players will start collecting them. Plus, if lots of players out there might well have wound up starting collecting them through big edition launch box sets, where it's always Space Marines versus someone else. Otherwise though, for currently popular factions in 40k, the other three most played are Tyranids, Necrons and Chaos Marines apparently. Tyranids, I'd have no doubt, would be far more mid-table prior to 10th edition's launch, but lots of people came back to the game in 10th edition, and they were just very easy to start collecting with the Leviathan box, arguably one of the best Games Workshop discount deals they've ever made, at least by their own standards. They weren't exactly starting from a place where no one was playing them, though. They're certainly one of the bigger factions that have been established throughout 40k's history. Interesting that it seems like it's basically the same for Necrons as well, they were kind of mid-tier in terms of play rate and interest, and then just had a huge jump in 9th edition. Again, the whole Indomitus launch during lockdowns was really quite a big event. Loads of people joined then, with really quite a lot of very nicely received miniatures coming out for them. I'm sure in 10th edition, having an early and powerful and pretty interesting codex won't have hurt their numbers here either. It certainly feels like there's a lot of parallels between the Necrons and Tyranids over 9th and 10th edition. Otherwise, making up this list is the Chaos Space Marines. Maybe the archetypical big bad of Warhammer 40k, mostly in the past. They've had plenty of nice model releases over the past few editions, and again are just a massively storage faction with loads of lore from the Heresy Era books and everything that's happened since. Otherwise, for the higher played armies of 40k, I think all of these were very predictable. Astra Militarum, Tau Empire, Adeptus Custodes and Orcs, all being played between 18-20% to 20 of players. Garden Orcs are both long established armies, going all the way back to 40k's roots, have really quite big model ranges as a result, and lots of players loyal to their armies. The Guard have just a little bit more grounded realism of humans in 40k, Orcs have their massive fun factor. Tau Empire were a slightly more recent Xenos addition to the setting, but exploded in popularity after they came out. At one point apparently they were rivaling Space Marines for model sales I seem to have heard in the past. And Adeptus Custodi is very much the new entrant on the top factions list, an army that's only really been its own thing since 8th edition, but in general people have found really quite cool and is one of the easiest ways to get into Warhammer 40k. They're a pretty easy low investment entry point to the game, plus the miniatures are just very fun, big golden dudes that are individually very powerful, and are kind of easy enough to play with if you're a newer player. Moving on, we've got some of the armies that are slightly more medium in play rate, these ones between 12 and 16%. It seems that the Adeptus Auroritus tops the list here, though I do kind of wonder if this might be due to being in context of the poll being done recently after their codex has come out and have had a fair bit of hype and interest. I'm not sure by how many percent that might skew the numbers, but it seems at least plausible that a few more players might have joined the faction and a lot more people engaging with online content recently. And I really wouldn't be too surprised if their numbers had been a little bit lower if I'd done the polls at other times. Still though, it wouldn't be an absolutely crazy difference, I'm sure. They have had a really nicely executed recent model range come out, and a lot of people have been looking forward to that given how long they languished in metal. Otherwise, Imperial Knights are on 15%. Again, like the Custodes, they feel like just a very easy army to access. You only need to paint up a few big models and you've got an army ready to go. Anecdotally, they often tend to be an army that's run as maybe a second army for people though, as opposed to a lot of people's primary factions, maybe starting out initially with allies. Death Guard are the most played of the deity-specific traitor legions at 14.5%. They 
They got loads of focus and attention from 8th edition, and I feel like since then maybe not quite as much attention or as many newer players joining the ranks of the Plague Marines, but their miniature range is definitely a lot more fleshed out than the other deity legions. It is kind of interesting to see the slight lackey in popularity of Eldari versus other long-established 40k factions, things like Guard or Orcs, they're not crazily behind, but the numbers are kind of notable, and this is despite having really quite a major release for the faction in 9th edition, even if it wasn't complete in terms of redoing the other kits that they need, and then in 10th edition it being just ridiculously powerful for the start of the edition kind of done them too much of a disservice, even if they're far more in line now. For the Dark Angels, they're kind of similar to the Eldari on 13.4, and that's really quite notably more than any of their rival Divergent chapters. I guess we've got the Lion and their recent model releases to thank for that. Pretty big buzz to have a Primarch come back, I've got no doubt that he spurred a whole load of people to pick up the Unforgiven, and then Games Workshop doubled down on it with Deathwing Knights and Inner Circle Companions and a few more releases for their Codex. It's only really them and Black Templars that have had any sort of proper range refresh for the more divergent Space Marine chapters. Finally rounding out the list here, we've got Chaos Demons at 12%, always being a bit of an unusual army, basically fantasy demons, but operating in 40k for the most part. I guess at least a fair few collectors of them might well have started out as allies to other forces, though they certainly do have a pretty big and expansive miniature range in their own right. Then we're getting into the least played half of Warhammer 40k armies. On joint 10th, there's actually three different armies, and mech with two others all of them reportedly collected by 11.6% of players. I think Admech have really cool aesthetics, though they're certainly a harder army to collect and paint than many, requiring quite a lot of hobby hours and quite a lot of money investment, and Games Workshop really haven't been doing them many favours in 10th edition with their codex launch, and then just repeatedly slashing their points costs. Fingers crossed they can turn that around in the balanced data slate for them. It does seem like there's really quite a lot of 40k armies that are really quite similar in terms of play rate, the next few ones all hover around the sort of 9 to 12% play rates. Next up, we've got the Gene Stealer Colts, which I honestly would have predicted lower. Again, I can't help but wonder if there's a little over reporting due to Gene Stealer players being a bit more heavily engaged at the moment due to their codex release. When I'm looking at things like Warhammer 40k tournament data, I feel like Gene Stealer Colts tend to be one of the ones that has very little data to report and just not many people tend to turn up with them, and it's not like they haven't been very strong at many times in the past. My instinct with Gene Seer Cult is that they might be an army that just has a little bit less broad appeal than some other factions out there, maybe not quite as much universal love for the half Xenos cultists, and maybe just a little bit less of a narrow scope compared with some other armies, usually focusing around one brutal revolution on one planet at a time, with a rather questionable end goal of everyone getting eaten. It perhaps doesn't help that they've historically been really quite an expensive faction too, maybe less so in 10th, though it seems that that might be set to change with the changing of the combat patrol, plus a lot of their units looking like they might be getting more hoardy. Still though, despite that, it's clear that they still have a good following. On the same sort of level, we've also got the next couple of Chaos Legions in World Eaters and Thousand Sons. Again, I feel like there's probably a bit of dilution effect going on between the Deity Legions and all the other Legions in Core Codex Chaos Space Marines. World Eaters do seem to have been at least fairly well received, given that they're pretty much a new faction in terms of having their own unique model line. Previously they would have just been one part of Core Codex Chaos Space Marines, and I seem to remember that when I did polls about Chaos Legions in the past, they were one of the popular ones, but not really any more so than the other major Chaos Legions out there. I'd guess that an awful lot of people who collect them currently started in 9th edition, when they actually got their nice new miniature ranges, rather than the very old Corn Berserkers that they didn't update for a long time. I'd guess 10th edition will probably be a good time for encouraging a few more very angry Space Marine collectors. They're strongly suspected to have a fair few more miniatures released with their 10th edition codex whenever it comes out. Otherwise, Thousand Suns seem to be in a similar sort of place, very appropriately the 9th elite played apparently. They've got a much more established following, with their range being out for a long time, but the difference is that they've just not really had any model releases by the Infernal Master for a very long time now. And again, maybe just have that dilution effect of being one cool legion amongst many that you can choose from, even if they do have some fun model support. I feel like just anecdotally, they maybe have a bit of a reputation for being more of an experienced player's army as opposed to a new player's army, just from people I've met who collect them. Kind of true to their lore, they often have fairly big punchy in-game decisions that you need to choose one or the other. Lots of really good options, but maybe not always being super obvious what the best one is. They're very strong at the moment, of course. Moving on, in 8th place we have the Leagues of Votan, collected by around 10% of players. 
Again, a new army from the end of 9th edition. It was kind of interesting to see that the World Eaters appear to have had more uptake than the leagues, at least by this poll's measurement anyway. I guess given that no one had any leagues of Botan miniatures before the end of 2022, they're not really doing too badly in the numbers and rankings. And again, it does feel like they've maybe got a bit of a half-range release out at the moment, and they're strongly expected to have far more coming in 10th edition. The Chaos Knights are at a similar kind of level as the 7th least played army by this poll, collected by around about 10% of players. Interesting to see that that's a fair bit lower than their Imperial cousins. I guess compared with them, they're fairly new as well, being their own actual proper standalone faction. I feel like prior to 9th edition, they were barely an army in their own right, only having one dedicated model kit. At least in 9th edition, they got their new war dogs plus the Abominant variant, giving them a bit more fleshing out as an army. Again, like the Imperial Knights though, maybe not the hardest army to jump into if you want to, mainly needing to paint up a few big vehicle miniatures and you're good to go. I can't help but think a few more people might be tempted by them if a few of their stronger armies tended not to revolve quite so heavily around War Dog spam. Reported in 6th least played place are the Drukhari. They're kind of notable as the least collected major faction that isn't basically various different flavours of Space Marine. And again, I suspect that most people would have expected Drukhari not to have one of the biggest followings out there in the game. Maybe kind of similar to Gene Stealer Cult. I think they've got some slightly more niche appeal, perhaps tending by their nature not to go for quite as many big cataclysmic conflicts, but more in general sticking to stealing, raiding and inflicting pain. Still a really cool and unique army with a great feel, of course, but I certainly can see why they might be slightly less wide appeal than some. Unlike a few of the others ranked a bit lower down as well, they don't have the excuse of not being around all that long. They have been around quite a long time in 40k, though Games Workshop certainly haven't been super forthcoming with releases for them. At the moment, they've got a good chunk of their range that's basically out of production as it went away, presumably as it wasn't selling and it was fine cast. Games Workshop finally redid the Mandrakes recently, but things like Grotesques, Beastmasters, and the Court of the Archon all could do with new sculpts. Finally, it seems that the last five armies that are least played in the game are just various different flavours of Space Marine, and it seems that despite the overall massive popularity of Space Marines in themselves, any individual chapter of them isn't quite as widely followed by the Dark Angels at the moment, it would seem. The Grey Knights are definitely the most distinct and standing apart from the rest of them, given that they've got their Terminators, Stripe Marines and Dread Knights to make up a very different core of the army, and maybe partially because of that they rank above the others besides the Dark Angels, Kind of interesting that Grey Knights do rank pretty low though, given that they're one of the easiest armies to get into the game in terms of buying models and money. I'd imagine one thing that might be putting people off Grey Knights might be the fact that at some point they seem inevitable to be getting a range update. At some point their Strike Marines and Terminators are going to get updated to the new scale, probably en masse like the Black Templars had it, but there's not really a lot of telling when. It could be 10th edition, though it doesn't seem to have been particularly rumoured, or it could be a very long way off in the future. I feel like that might make at least a few players hesitant about committing big to them if you don't know when that's going to happen. In fourth, we have the Blood Angels, who have a pretty similar story there. They're a bit less than the Grey Knights again at 7.7% of players collect them, and I feel like historically they haven't really been too different to the Dark Angels in terms of following. They definitely have their own cool aesthetic with a bunch of angry space marines hurtling out of the air on jump packs, but just like the Grey Knights, they've got primary style updates, quite possibly just around the corner at the moment. There's certainly been some rumblings about them getting an update in 10th edition for a good while now, and if that did happen in a big way like the Dark Angels, then I wouldn't be too surprised if their numbers were a lot closer to the forces of the Unforgiven. In third least collected, we've got the Black Templars. 6.6% .6 of players reported collecting them. It is kind of interesting that they do appear to remain so niche. Out of armies that have had big updates, they've had a pretty nice one pretty recently. I'm sure quite a lot of players will have started playing them in 9th edition, though it did feel like before that they were coming from a position of one of the least played factions in the game. If it had to guess numbers for Space Marine chapters, I would have put them below Dark Angels, Blood Angels or Space Wolves prior to their big update. Though even after that, it still doesn't look like it was enough to have them catch up with Blood Angels, the Sons of Sanguinius just seeming to have a bit of a bigger following. Second from bottom, and just pipped out by the Black Templars, are the Space Wolves. 6.4% of players reported collecting them. I feel like over my years of playing 40k, Space Wolves have maybe declined in popularity a bit, ever since sort of like the early or mid-2000s perhaps. Warhammer definitely had a bit of a different feel there, and maybe their Space Viking sort of vibe or something that people gelled with a bit more then than currently perhaps. Certainly on online discourse, they seem to attract a bit more faction hate than some of the other factions out there. 
even if they do still have some fun stuff going for them. I do feel a bit less universally loved than some of the other chapters, at least in terms of internet discourse. Otherwise though, they're basically in a similar kind of place to the Blood Angels, waiting for a Primaris range update that's going to come at some point, and likely people are being a bit apprehensive about going too heavily into them before then, not knowing which firstborn kits are going to get removed or updated into a much cooler newer model. Finally though, and least played in 40k right now, I think unsurprisingly are the Death Watch. I think most people probably would have predicted them as the lesser played faction in the game. They've just always been super niche since Games Workshop expanded them to be one of the more major divergent chapters in 40k. That really hasn't been the case for all that long. When their veterans and the Corvus Blackstar and things came out, in the Primaris era, Games Workshop has shown them basically less love than any of the other divergent chapters as well. They got a Primaris upgrade sprue, but no unique character like the other armies got. And having had quite a lot of neglect and rules and models that frequently get very radically reinterpreted, it doesn't seem to have made most people particularly excited to collect the faction. There's certainly been a bit of discussion as to whether or not they're going to be safe for getting their full codex in 10th edition, or being reinterpreted in some sort of way, such as Agents of the Imperium. Still though, despite being on paper 40k's least played faction, it's not like they're unplayed. Around 1 in every 20 40k players or so is likely to collect Death Watch. I feel like 40k is a hobby where there's quite a lot of appeal to collecting niche things and trying to have something interesting and different that other people might not have seen on the other side of the table quite as much. In any case though, let me know what you make of the list. Are the rankings as you would have guessed, or are any of these ranked higher or lower than you might have suspected? Look forward to hearing your thoughts down in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics. I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming, and I do tend to post new ones just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep these coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with the chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.